Okay. So So where are you missing Halis all the classes? Last class also you missed. Today also you joined uh, late. So what's going on? Okay. Hello, sir. Good morning, sir. I have one number, so I missed that. Okay. So you shouldn't miss classes, man. So you are already missing uh, basics. So basics, you are lagging a lot. That we covered on the beginning classes. Okay, anyhow, so how can you call this constructor in this constructor? Or this constructor in this constructor? So you have to use this keyword. So this keyword is a reference variable to refer the current class instance variables, constructors, and methods it will refer. So this all this is belongs to object only. So not going to use it inside the static methods. This keyword you should not use in the static methods. This keyword you can use either in the non-static methods or in the constructor inside. See, I have used it in the constructor inside. But how can you call this constructor here? So I already developed for the ID and name. I don't want to develop again. So I'm going to reuse here. So how to reuse, if you want to call this constructor here, so you have to call, instead of a student, you have to call this. Then how many parameters are there for that uh, student constructor? So two, I'm going to pass that parameter value, so ID, name. So this logic you are calling already, developed one, you are calling with a, this keyword. So it is going to that constructor and it will call while execution time. Now I need to develop a logic for this branch and each. So I'll develop the logic. So this dot branch equal to branch. So this dot is equal to is. So this is how you can Show. Oh, it's showing error. Why oh, it's okay. So I have made it a string. So it's an integer. Okay. So that's how you can call one constructor in another constructor in the same class using this keyword. So I avoided writing this code again. Because when I call this constructor like this, it will go and call this logic. So again, your duplicate code you are avoiding. That's the main purpose of this. Okay, clear? Any questions here? That's how you can manage uh, so constructors and this keyword. So let me create a one more uh, object with the parameters. With the two parameters, I am, I'm going to call with three parameters. With the two parameters. Okay, so you have to use uh, this one, S2, S3. Okay, so now, where is, I'm not passing parameters, right? 
So two parameters means I need to call this constructor. So if you want to call this parameterized constructor, what I need to do? I have to pass the parameter values. So parameter value, this is the first one, ID value I have given, see? So this constructor I am calling, so I'm passing ID value, then name I'm going to give. So I'm going to give name, Ramesh. So this is the, so how you can give. And remaining ID I haven't provided. So what will happen? It will be a default values. So here I'm going to provide, see each, no parameterized constructor advantage is, you can give unique Q values for each object. This object is different. This object is different. So both objects are different. Both objects are different, but you can give different values. I can give now, for example. So then I can give computers. So then I can give so like this. See now, I, now when, when you call this constructor, this will call the, this constructor body, this constructor body it will call. So this call will go to this body. So this call will go to, this is the constructor which refers to this body. So based on the number of parameters, now here zero parameters, it will call this body. So are you clear? So based on the constructor type, so while creating object itself, you need to follow the rules. If it is a parameterized, you have to pass the parameter values. If you take a two parameterized, you give two parameter values. If you take more than one parameters, how many parameters they declared here? Same number of parameters, you have to give it here also. Okay, so that's all about so parameterized. You can see even I'm covering constructor overloading. Why I'm saying constructor overloading? Say class contains multiple constructors with a different so parameters and data type. So there are different parameters. So are available. Different parameters are available. That's why we are just so calling that. Okay. Yeah. That's all about um, constructor part. And uh, let's move on to the next one. Inheritance hoops concept. I have covered uh, encapsulation constructor. So now I'm going to cover, so inheritance. So let's move on to the, in, in the same, same wherever constructor is there, there are itself inheritance is there. So that's the inheritance. Just expand, read more. You do that and it will expand. So now, so inheritance means, so what is mean by inheritance? This is another, Oops concept. So it is a process where one class acquires all the properties and methods from another class. That is called inheritance. So with the you no, know, the inheritance basically will help you to reduce the duplicate code and uh, you can write effective code. Sorry. So you can reuse the code. You can avoid a duplicate code. That's the main advantage. And second advantage is you can achieve runtime polymorphism or method overriding concept with this inheritance. So without inheritance, it's not possible to achieve a runtime polymorphism or method overriding. Method overriding is not possible. Okay, so the class which inherits the properties of other 
which is known as a subclass. Subclass, how can you say? Subclass means, so which class is, so inheriting the properties from other class, that is called subclass, or derived class, or child class. These are the three names are there. So the class whose properties are inherited. So that means from which class you are inheriting, that class is called superclass, base class, or parent class. Superclass, base class, or parent class, we call that. Okay, so even private members cannot be accessible in child class, even though you applied inheritance. For example, uh, in your class, you have a private variables and private methods. Those cannot be accessible in child class. So those cannot be accessible in the child class because so private means it cannot be accessible anywhere, right? So it will be accessible in the same class only. That's the reason even if you apply inheritance also not possible. So if you apply inheritance also not possible. So that is the one uh, inheritance so concept. And how can you do inheritance? You will use the extends keyword between two classes. Basically, inheritance happens between two classes. Class A extends class B. So like class super, so one class, parent class, or a super class. So this class will extend to, to the subclasses. Class subclass extends super class. Class subclass extends superclass. So that's the how you can extend the uh, child and parent classes. So the advantages are so reusability of the code, main purpose, and uh, so to achieve runtime polymorphism or method overriding, we can use the so this inheritance concept. So there are different types of uh, inheritances. So one is uh, so single inheritance. Uh, class A extends to class B. So, so you, you should create a first class A. That means parent class or super class. So declare all your variables and methods. And then, so public class B extends A. So now, extends right side whatever is there that's a parent class extends left side so whatever is there that's a subclass or child class
Okay. So multi-level inheritance. Multi-level means three levels. See multiple levels. So class A, class B, class C, three classes are there. Three classes are there. So public class A, public class B, public class C. See. So the class B is the child of A. Class C is child of B. But C can access B properties and methods and A properties and methods also. Okay. So the B can access only A properties and methods. Because B is going to be child to A and C is going to be child to B. But so B already extended to C. So the B so can access. So the no only A properties and C can access both A and B. Okay. So that's the uh, multi-level inheritance means me. So hierarchical inheritance means, so hierarchical inheritance is basically uh, class A, class B, class C, three classes you have again. So one parent can have multiple childs, right? That's possible, right? So both childs can use class A properties. So here, so class A extends to B and also extends to C. So B extends A, C extends A means, see the parent is same for this B and C. So that's called hierarchical inheritance. So hierarchical inheritance means one class extends to multiple child classes. That is called hierarchical inheritance. And the last one, multiple inheritance. Multi-level is different, multiple inheritance is different. Don't get confused. Okay, so multiple inheritance means that is not possible at all in Java in case of class. Why it's not possible, I'll tell you. So the reason behind this is, uh, so the, to make the design very simple and to avoid confusion to the compiler, they are not supporting at all this multiple inheritance. So what is mean by multiple inheritance means? First of all, understand that. One class extends to multiple classes. That is called multiple inheritance. This process is not supported by Java entirely in case of class. In case of class, it is not supported. In case of class, it is not supported. But so there is other case, it will be supported. So there are other places this will be supported. So that's how multiple inheritance means. So why they are not supporting? Suppose you have uh, three classes, A, B, C, three classes. Give the answer properly. Why Java doesn't support multiple inheritance if anybody asks you? So you just give answer saying that Java doesn't support multiple inheritance because to make the design very simple, and to avoid confusion, that's the main reason. So what is the confusion? And let me explain you. Suppose you assume that there are three classes, A, B, C. In the A class, you have M1 and M2 methods. Even in the B class, you have M1 and M2 methods. Method names are same in both the classes. Now you are extending, C extends to A comma B. Now you are calling M1 method. So compiler will get confusion from which class it has to go and pick the M1 logic, from A or B. So extends means what? So this, is, this C can has a privilege to use A or B properties, both, right? So now here it will get a confusion by the compiler. Okay, from which class I need to get the M1 or B1, M2? So that is the main reason 
they are not supporting at all this multiple inheritance concept. Okay, so these are the main reasons of different type of uh, inheritances and why Java doesn't support multiple inheritance. And let's see now. So how to call, generally, you know, right, one class um, static members, you can call in another class. Uh, so what is the procedure? One class uh, static members, how can you call in another class? Hmm? Class reference. Class name dot. Class, class name of static method name of static. Methods. Static method or static variable, right? So that's a procedure. So we already discussed and practiced many. And now also you practice them. So those are important. And uh, so, but when when you apply inheritance, then how to call? Then no need of class name. Directly you can call the, all the static members. Directly, static methods, so static variables you can call directly. That's the, so how you can call static members one class static members in another class, if you apply inheritance, directly you can call. No need to prefix class name. When you, if you, you should apply, first condition is you should apply the inheritance. So how to apply the inheritance? Subclass extends parent class. That's the inheritance syntax. So what is the inheritance syntax? Subclass extends parent class. So that is the uh, child class has a privilege to use all the parent class properties in the child class. Okay. So now, how can you access non-static methods and variables. So if you create object for parent class in the inheritance process, so inside the child class, you cannot access the child class members with that object reference. For example, you have a non-static variables and non-static methods, both in the parent and child classes. But if you create a object for, right? Uh, parent class. Then with that object reference, you cannot call child class objects. You can call only parent class objects, not the child class objects. So that then how can you access with the single object, both class, non-static variables and non-static methods. Just create object for child class only. Then child class can have both members parent and child class properties you can call that is the main concept of this so you should understand these properties how to call So let's go and now, now uh, write the programs. Some programs we'll write and then we can now uh, continue tomorrow, next one.
Okay. So first, let's create a employee class. Okay. I'm just showing uh, you know inheritance process. First, I'm creating a parent class. Let's create the parent class. So I don't want main method because I'm just creating a skeleton of parent class. So I'll create my instance variables and instance methods, some static stuff. So what are the employee properties you have? So I'm going to use again encapsulation also here. Private string EMP name. So private int EMP ID private double EMP salary. So like this, you can create So EMP salary, and also you can create um, to what is the so company name also you can give private private static um, string company name. So why I made company name static? Because it is common because to all. it is in unique. So because it's a common thing, right? It's common to all the employees. So the common thing you have to refer always with a static keyword. So if it is a common to many, then the common property you have to make it as a static. So let's generate uh, setters and getters. Okay. So I'm going to generate setters and getters. So private, so members are private, but methods also public, setters and getters. So that's an encapsulated class, right? So I'm covering again encapsulation one more time. So practically I'm showing encapsulation class how to create. So source, getters and setters. So select all, just create a, where you want to create a company name after. After company name, I want to generate setters and getters. So you simply it will generate the see uh, setters and getters. Okay, so that's all about company name. Also, see it created a setter method and getter method. But see here we are not using this keyword. Can you observe this? So I'm not using this dot company name. I'm using class name dot static variable. Always the static stuff belongs to class. Objects, non-static stuff belongs to object. Okay. So here, this keyword is always going to refer objects, instance variables, instance methods, and constructors. Okay, now, so let me write a few more methods, okay? So one more method I'll write, uh, static method I'll write. So protected static void send notification. Send notification. So one method we are creating. And here, so I'm just saying um, started executing the employee class. So employee class, um, send notification method. So after depositing
after depositing the salary inform send a notification okay so then private get access another method i am creating so another method i am creating just uh, simply say that um, started executing um, employee class get access method. So why I'm writing all this kind of different access modifier related methods in the parent class? See how you can access them. Private means what? Public protected. So default also, if you want, you can create one more method. So private is not accessible, private method anywhere. So swipe. Right card to get access. Okay, so that's all about this employee class. So definition. I just declared uh, some of the instance variables and static variables. Then I'm creating a getter and setter methods so that I can consume these methods in another class. So this is going to be my parent class. So always inheritance means it represents easy relationship, parent-child relationship. Parent-child relationship. That means easy relationship. See, uh, for example, you take a manager class. So manager is an employee. So that means so it's a Child, right? Manager is a child. Employee is the parent class. So manager class I can create and uh, I can extend that. So let's see, uh, create a manager class. So if you want to take a main method and here you can extend so employee class. So this is the, how you can extend. Manager extends employee class. So this is called inheritance. Now, this child class has a privilege to use all the parent class properties and methods without creating them again in the child class. That is called inheritance. That is called inheritance. So inheriting the properties. Okay, so that's the one. Tomorrow I'll uh, just show you. Um, I just want to give some bonus to this guy. Okay, so double bonus. Double bonus. How can I supply this variable value? How can I supply this variable value? How can I supply this variable value? Private I made. So I cannot call another classes. How can I supply this variable value? Instance variable values, how can you supply? How can you set the variable values? Creating a setter or not. Creating a setter and getter methods. So what is the other way? There is one more option also. True? Parameterized constructor. Please make a note these points. One way to set your instance variable values is through setter method. Another way to set your instance variable value is through parameterized constructor. So I'm going to create a parameterized constructor. How to create a parameterized constructor? So public 
the class name, whatever the class name is there, manager is a class name. So double bonus and this dot bonus equal to bonus. That's it. So this is the how to set this value. And you want to get a getter method? Just generate the getter method. Public double get bonus return bonus. That's it. See, through constructor, I set this value. Then I'm getting with a getter method. Okay. Okay. Yep. So that's it. Uh, any questions before closing? <laughs>